Good afternoon, Money.net Live. Here we go. Todd Horowitz, Bubba Trading. We all know, we all love him. Hey, uh, Bubba, look, <laughs> the markets have uh, been a little bit wonky. The volume has been very low. Um, I was just on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and I don't think there's anybody there. Um, it's just being pushed around, right? The trading is so light, Steve, and great to be back with you again. Uh, trading is so light. It's it's like not worth trading, right? Like, you know, I'll right. day trade every morning with my members, and I go, that's it for them. I'm going to play poker. I'm doing something else because we're real thin. And, of course, going into tomorrow with the FOMC, it's yeah. always thin ahead of that. So if you take a thin market and make it thinner, it really just creates a lot more havoc. and doesn't really give you any really good opportunities unless you know specifically what you're looking for. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, tomorrow, obviously, the FOMC meeting. Uh, this morning, it was CME said that 97.2% uh, chance of a 25 basis point hike. Uh, the lawmakers, including the Democrat side, are asking the Fed and specifically Powell to stop raising rates. Uh, what's your thoughts there for tomorrow? Well, I think they're going at least 25 basis points. They could go more. You know, I, again, I, I think that they got, they dealt this, bad hand that we have by raising rates into a recession in the first place. Mm -hmm. Instead of letting natural good inflation take over, they made it horrible inflation, which is again is taxation without representation. I think when you when you look at the bigger picture, they've kind of done this and they're kind of now forced to continue. I mean, inflation is not going away. And right. even though commodity prices are getting hammered, retail prices continue to go higher. So the, the 6.2 or the 5.8, whatever print they give you on CPI, multiply that by three or four. That is the real true inflation. And with the Saudi Arabia cutting oil, it's going to make it even higher now because, of course, 80 percent of everything you do is involved with fossil fuels. Yeah, but it seems that the Fed has a serious um, problem in regards to being honest. <laughs> I mean, the first it was job cut. Second, it was, I mean, they got to weather lately, I guess. Um, the problem, what do we need to really hear for them to just stop raising rates? Well, I, I mean, I think, first of all, I, I don't think if you go back to 08, I don't think they should have ever gone to zero. I don't think they should have bailed out the banks. I think they should let the banks go out of business and bail out the depositors, right? They are now. <laughs> well, that's right. I mean, the, why, why is anybody too big to fail? Why do you want to keep a crappy business model? that prints money and makes a fortune, and if they go bad, oh, well, the Fed will bail us out, which really means that the American taxpayer will bail us out. Right. So I think they painted this corner, this picture, and I think the, the real blame, if you want to blame somebody, Ben Bernanke in 2013, when he, when he backed off, when he started to hike rates back then, because rates can be supported much higher than they were, and even higher than they are now, because that's really more natural rates, and that's more free market rates. You go to a peer-to-peer -peer lender, you're going to pay 10, 11, 12 percent. Yeah. And you talked about commodities going higher, but yet oil now under the 72 handle here, 71.64 again. Uh, talk to me. You're saying Saudi cuts before the summer here? Well, see, I think Saudi going to cut. Well, I think they're going to cut in the next three weeks. That's my prediction. Whether I'm right or not, I don't know. But I thought they were going to cut right before driving season. They fooled me and cut at the beginning of April, right? Yeah. So I, I think there's one more cut. Look, they know they have us over a barrel, so to speak, because we are a net importer. We're no longer an exporter. You know, the, the numbers are skewed because we, we can export diesel and we export LNG. But overall, crude oil, we're not a net exporter anymore. And they can really put the screws to us, which they've done many times before. So why should I think today's going to be any different? Yeah, and you, you know the old adage that the government's going to come in and swoop in and save the day with the oil, especially buying back for SPR. Uh, we kind of saw that a little bit, but then the Department of Energy says not so much. Um, doesn't seem to be any pinning underneath there here. Well, I, I think that again, you know, you know, we, we're not being exactly run like a like a real tight ship here, right? We've got a lot of issues that are being done. And, and a lot of fa false narratives as to what's going on. And, and I think that, you know, again, they're going to have to refill it because that's really, that oil is really wartime oil. That is not, you know, to, to give out to try to bring prices down. And it has not been that effective in bringing the prices down either. We've seen it pushed down, but then right back up. And this is about the fourth time that a president has tried to use the SPR to lower prices and it has not worked. And this will continue to be another non-working strategy. Whereas if we just drilled our own oil, we wouldn't have a problem. 
Yeah, agreed, agreed. Even though, but he has opened up some areas, especially in Alaska, which I'm very shocked about. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna throw you a curveball. Uh, the day Hindenburg research came out and smacked up good old Carl Icahn, uh, calling it pretty much a, a fake company in a lot of ways. Um, IEP stocks down 24.3 percent. Carl gonna come out and swinging? I think Carl's gonna come out. Listen, Carl's too smart to do anything that would really get him in that kind of danger. I mean, he might do some things that are a little shady occasionally. But I don't think he's putting anything together that is not cannot be proved. I mean, he's not going to put himself in jeopardy for sure. I mean, he's a billionaire who is extremely smart and has a great understanding of markets. So I would not I would be tend to want to be a look to be a buyer of anything that he does, because, you know, that he's going to do his best. He, he's he's Elon Musk before there was Elon Musk. <laughs> Like, he was Mr. Corporate Raider. That's the, the nickname. I mean, and the average volume looking at it now for the daily trades on IEP is 1.7 million. Today, it's 13.5 million. Overreaction? My, way overreaction. I would, in fact, when we get off, I'm going to look at it and maybe have to buy some because, Ooh. you know, I mean, I, I look, I, I'm just saying, I, if you believe in the who's running the company, you got to believe in it, right? I mean, this guy is not a dummy. He's a genius and he knows and especially, you know, with the advent of social media, he knows exactly how to push that stuff as well when he's ready to push it. You know, this yeah. is not the old fashioned days of green mail. This is right now. You can put it out right now. And when he's ready, he'll put it out. And I think you'll see a, a, a pop. Again, you, if you do make a trade like that, you have to be aware of the risk. Don't get crazy. But it's certainly and I'm sure you're playing it a little bit. It, it's certainly a trade to make if you have the capital and can take the risk and know that you may have to exit and be wrong. Yeah, I'm full disclosure. I'm actually a long IP now as well. And I know somebody else who's a genius as well. That's Todd Horowitz, Bubba <laughs> Trading. As always, Bubba, I thank you for showing up and we'll see you right here next week, man. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. Have a great week, everybody.